Hi, brothers and sisters. This is Brenda Price coming to you tonight in our new studio, and we're very happy to be with you. And I'm excited about sharing this word, not because it's uh, something that you're going to be thrilled over, but something that you need to know. I was looking through the news. This is an actual picture that was taken as a meteorite fell out of the sky, and it appears to be going right into this um, volcano in Indonesia. And the photographer noticed slightly that there was some kind of bright light to his right, so he set his camera uh, shutter at the speed of four seconds, which made the light appear like it was long, uh, but the light was actually round. And the colors that were produced in the picture came from the fact that there was magnesium and calcium and nickel inside uh, the land mass there and it produced those colors uh, and it fell some distance away uh, they don't think it actually fell into the volcano because he didn't really hear a noise or a sound so they think it may have fell several miles away but the point is Picture yourself walking along a normal, beautiful day, and suddenly something just, I mean, four second shutter now, but suddenly something appears in the sky and falls very quickly, and it's a meteorite. It could have fell right on him, or it could have fell near him, or it could have fell in the, in the volcano and started an eruption. So my point is, there's going to be a lot of suddenlies happen. And I want to say to the body of Christ, look out. Look out. Something's about to come. Now I say this a lot, but some of you are not listening, and I'll continue to repeat it because I want you to look out for your spirit man. I want you to look out for the things that are coming on the world. You know, a preacher finds a sermon in everything. And the minute I saw that, I pictured something that I'd seen in a vision years ago. And I saw someone walking in this forest-like area. And there was this den, this cave. And inside the cave was like a tiger. But it was so far hidden back in the cave, the person passing by didn't see it. But someone who was on that journey with him took a picture. And when they looked at the picture, you saw those two green eyes very clearly from the cave. And I heard the Lord say, you don't know how many times I've spared your life. And you didn't even know that danger was that close. Well, look out because the danger is that close. Um, I'm going to read a few scriptures because I want you to know that this sermon is biblical. I'm going to make it as quick as I can. But the word tells us in Matthew 24, 44, Therefore be ye also ready for an hour that ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. So what was this man doing? He was a wise servant, looking over the household, and that's what a watchman does, to give everyone their meat, their food, when it's time. But the main scripture that I want to share with you tonight comes from Luke 21, 34 through 36, because this has been resounding in my spirit, almost like a loud vo voice speaking to me. It says in Luke 21, 34 and 30 through, uh, 36, and take heed to yourself. That means look at yourself. Pay attention to what's going on in your heart, in your thoughts, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged 
with drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you unaware. For as a snare shall it come upon you, and it will be on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. So that doesn't leave anybody out, no matter where you're from. Watch ye therefore, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape the things that come that shall come to pass, and to stand before the man, son of man. Watch. It's going to come quickly as a snare on all the earth. I think that's already happening, and I think you know what I mean. We don't want to walk in fear. And there's a difference in walking in fear and walking in carefulness. But the body of Christ is told to be careful. Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not faint. How many of you are praying right now that, the, that God makes you aware and that you will not faint when these suddenly come upon the world? Look out because they're here. To be thoughtless is to put yourself in a vicarious situation. If you're not thinking ahead and you're not acting according to wisdom, things are going to take you by shock. How many times have we seen someone walk in front of a car or, um, or like my children? I have three children, and a lot of times they would, I would leave them asleep maybe on, in the middle of the bed or to play, and they would precariously just fall off or start to fall off something and be hurt, and I would catch them just in time. And um, how many times have you reached for something and you knock over something else? If things happen that you don't expect, and, you know, it's not just in being careless, we actually do not expect these things. But at this point in time, we should be expecting them. Look out! It's here. If life teaches us anything, it teaches us to expect the unexpected. Another thing that we learn in our spiritual development is that when we just do things without checking to see if it's God's will or if He approves of it, we get into these difficult situations and Jesus always wants his words and actions to point to the Father. Don't be caught in, in a predicament because you didn't take time to pray and earnestly seek God if you're in a wrong direction. In John 44, 31, the Bible says, But the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Where was Jesus going? Uh, he was pointing to the Father in the strongest way. He was saying, what I'm about to do, dying on the cross, will prove to the world that the Father loves them. And he's given me the commandment to do this. So come on, let's get with it. We try and live like we will never have to give an account to anyone. I tell you, we're going to give account to God. The Bible tells us that we're going to stand before the white judgment seat of Christ and give account for all the deeds done in the body. That means what you're doing in your body, in your thoughts, as well as your physical actions. We're going to go now into, listen to me, look out. We're going into the greatest time of testing that the world has ever been through. Do you get it yet? Do you not see this is a test to see who's going to fall on whose side. We're going into the greatest test and the greatest move of God at the same time. And righteous judgment, God's judgments are righteous, are going to be hand in hand with God's grace. He's going to check and balance. He's going to check to make sure everything is balanced. Hand in hand, check and balanced, measured. He's going to measure us, our decisions, our choices, what happens to our hearts when certain things happen. He's measuring, checking, weighing, 
constantly. Okay, what are you going to be? Approved or rejected after God has checked you out? Jesus said to the Pharisees, You discern the weather, but you can't see the time you are in. We can learn the prices of things, how they're going up, but we don't discern what's really happening. Look out! Something's about to fall on the earth. 2 Timothy 2, 3-5 through 5. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that war entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive to be a master over something, he cannot be crowned unless he strives lawfully. If you're trying to make the grade with God, but you're trying to cut corners, just going to church, not taking heed, not looking deeper inside, you're going to end up on the wrong side when this begins to take place in this world as it has already begun. Isaiah 21.8 says, Tell us these words as he was watching over Israel. He said, Tell us these words. And God asked him, what do you see? And he cried, this is a watchman, a lion, my Lord. And he said, I stand continually upon the watchtower. By day, by night, I'm set in whole nights on that watchtower. I spend whole nights there because he knew danger was ahead and the people needed to be warned. Are you warning? Are you watching? Are you praying? Are you taking heed? Because it's going to come as a snare on all the earth, and we cannot say that God did not warn us. He has warned us. All the proof is before you, church. Please, I beg you to pay attention to your inner man and to the messages that you're giving. If you're a minister and you're just patting people on the head and telling them everything's good and going to go back to normal, you're lying to the people. Nothing will ever be normal again. We are serving a different kingdom. It is the kingdom of God. There's a big difference between the kingdom of man and the kingdom of God because the kingdom of man is served in selfishness, corruption, and we can't rest in a government like that. But we can rest in the government of Jesus Christ because of his nature. The government of God rests on who Jesus is, his nature. He's love. He's kind. He's, he always wants to tell you the things he does before he does it. We can trust the government of the kingdom of God. And people slumber because they're not aware that anything dangerous is coming. They're not aware. You can't sleep when you know there's a thief at the door. You can't sleep and be in slumber and be in a party mode when you know everything's about to break loose that you've ever known. So don't slumber. Be aware. As long as we work as sovereign individuals, instead as a corporate body of Christ, who is unifying under the head of Jesus and not under the head of a man or a woman or even the five-fold ministry, even though that works to bring forth a fullness in a people. Remember, the head is Jesus Christ. And as long as we're working under his head, we won't be subdivided. We're going to be in unison. We're going to be in oneness of purpose. If you don't have these qualities, you can never make it as a watchman. The church doesn't realize this is a battle. And we're contending with another kingdom. We're contending with another force. While the church even is eating and drinking and being merry, being happy, they don't realize that a war is on their shores. They don't realize they're fighting with an enemy that's waiting for you to be caught off guard. Just sitting and eating and drinking and being at ease. Suddenly, like a snare, it's going to come on all the earth. Look out!
The enemy will come in and take advantage of our laziness, church. You better bet he's waiting for you to be lazy. Everything you've been given is a tool for a certain purpose. Whether it's a tool to share, to smile, to love, to preach, to sing, to fight in warfare at night or during the day, whenever God gives you that warfare time, the tools you are given in sharp prayer where you're really hearing from God is a weapon against your enemy. You have an enemy. That's why there's a battle. That's why there's a war. You have to do the will of the captain, Jesus Christ. And you must know uh, that you're called to do that. Everybody in the church, not, not a positional thing, whether you're a pastor or a teacher. You're called to do that as a Christian. Abraham one day was sitting up by his tent door. He was a watchman, but he wasn't probably aware that there were three angels coming until he suddenly looked out and saw three angels, realized at the end of the story that these three men were angels and one of them was the Lord. And he said, can I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? I'm going to Sodom and Gomorrah because I've heard how evil they are and I'm going to check it out and I'm going to destroy the city. And Abraham begged him not to. God had to come to the watchman first. And God listened to him. He said, if you find even five righteous, will you spare the city? And God said, I will spare it for five. Or I think it was ten. I'm not sure. But there was only Lot in his family that made it out. He was a watchman. Abraham was sitting by the door of his tent. And he saw the angels he saw the Lord. And in intercession for lives, as you and I should be, Abraham said, Shall not the judge of the whole earth do right? That's what Moses said to God. When God said, Get out of the way, Moses. I'm going to destroy Israel. He said, Then destroy me too. God's looking for watchmen. God told my daughter tonight, I want you to pray for this particular individual, right now. That's what a watchman does. Get out of bed right now and pray. Or, or leave this uh, place you're going to now and go seek my face. An intercessor lives knowing that the judge of the whole earth is watching and at any moment can let go because of man's disobedience. But Abraham knew the heart of the king, so he begged the king of kings, can you do it for five righteous or ten righteous? Can you, can you not do it for at least that? Okay, I'm going to read this scripture to you. One more time. Take heed to yourself, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly, for it will come on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape the things coming upon this world. Watch. Now God has your attention, and we desire His authority in our lives because we know it's safe under His authority. And I feel in my heart that as the bride of Christ begins to wake up, as people begin to wake up, we're going to desire his authority in our life. We're going to desire his perfect will. And the bride's going to be able to come together. The prayer warriors, the intercessors, the travailers, those who are looking for their bridegroom, they're going to come together. And when all these rivers come together, the Lord showed it to me like this. He said, it's going to bring fullness to the body of Christ, like Ephesians says, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Jesus Christ. That's where he's headed. Not a half empty vessel, but a full vessel. And when that happens, every stream, every fountain, every river, every lake, every ocean is going to come together in unity, knowing the hour that they're living in. And their message is going to say, look out. 
Take heed to yourselves and look up because if you're his, your redemption draws nigh. And when these rivers, oceans, lakes, springs come together, there's going to be a big splash that's going to end in fullness. Are you ready? Are you ready? Amen. God bless you.